Just about a year ago, I decided to invest a significant portion of money into the JP Morgan Premium Income ETF known as JEPI, which I currently own around 671 shares as of right now, which are valued at around $35,400. Now I purchased these shares of JEPI at around $36,770. And as I'm making this video, I am down $1,330 on the position. But in this video, we are going to break down exactly what the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF has to offer, how the ETF works, and of course, last but not least, I'm going to share every single dividend payment that I was paid out from JEPI. Now stick around, drop a like down below and subscribe and let's get into it. So heading over to the JP Morgan website, if you're not aware, now this ETF has been trading since around 2020 and I've been buying shares pretty much since then. Now the way this ETF works, it says JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF seeks to deliver multi distributable income and equity market exposure with less volatility. It then says expertise portfolio managers with over 60 years of combined experience in investing in equities and equity derivatives. Then portfolio defensive equity portfolio employs time tested bottom up fundamental research process with stock selection based on our proprietary risk adjusted stock rankings. Also discipline option overlay implements written out of the money S&P 500 index call options that seek to generate distributable monthly income. Now the fund not only invests in equities, but also utilizes options as a way to generate higher income by writing out of the money S&P 500 call options. And because the JEP ETF is so focused on a strategy of high income based approach, and this is not only from dividend stocks, but also utilizing derivatives and cover calls to juice the high distribution yield with the goal being that between the dividend payments and the premium, the shareholders should be passed along a good sized dividend on a monthly basis. Now, JEPI is very well known for this covered call strategy. And if you didn't know, a covered call is an option contract where the option seller owns the underlying stock or ETF that they are going to sell. Selling a covered call to a third party gives the buyer the right to purchase the underlying security at an agreed upon price, which is known as the strike price, by an agreed upon date, which is known as the expiration date. Every option contract has a buyer side and a seller side. So when selling the option, you earn the premium, the buyer pays the premium. Selling a cover call means that if the underlying security price goes above the strike price by expiration, you would be required to sell the shares to the opposing side. Now by implementing this cover call strategy, JEPI doesn't only earn a large amount of premium on an ongoing basis, but also by selling cover calls, it helps with downside protection if the market was to really turn for the worse. Now also important to add, these are all the dividends that were paid out from the JEPI ETF over the past year or so. And what's kind of crazy is that when I first invested into JEPI a while back, this ETF used to pay out anywhere from 60, 50 or 40 cents per share per month in dividends. But as you can see, ever since pretty much 2023, the dividends have been much, much lower, which gives JEPI a current trailing 12 month dividend yield of only around eight or nine percent. Now I'm not saying by any means I'm not happy with an eight or nine percent dividend yield, but I purchased JEPI hoping to get north of 10, which is just not the case anymore. Now some more important aspects of JEPI to take note of, the expense ratio is 0.35%, which is higher than that of passively managed ETFs like SCHD, VIG or VU. But keep in mind JEPI is more actively managed and of course with the option strategy, it's going to be a little bit more labor intensive. Now the dividend frequency for JEPI was another one of the selling points on why I purchased JEPI a while back. It pays out a dividend on a monthly basis, which is nice for me as of right now, I'm using the JEPI dividends to buy more shares of more different stocks or ETFs, but in the future, it would be pretty nice to use this monthly dividend to pay for bills or any other expenses that come about. Now JEPI has just over 29 billion in assets under management, making it one of the largest sized funds in this category. Now JEPI's performance on the max timeframe since around 2020. It's up 3.25% without dividends included. And this is honestly not all that horrible considering a lot of the cover call ETFs that have a similar strategy are actually down quite substantially more. Look at QYLD, for example, down 33% on the max time frame. But year to date performance, JEPI is still in the red, down 3%. Again, this is not dividends included, so that's important. Now, also important to note when it comes to the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF is the holding breakdown to see what this ETF is actually made up. So as of right now, it looks like technology and healthcare are the top two sectors with 17% and 14% being the leaders. Then we have industrials, consumer defensive, financials, consumer cyclical, communication utilities, basic material, real estate, energy, and 13% in corporate bonds. Now the top 10 holdings are things like Amazon, MasterCard, Adobe, Progressive, Microsoft, AbbVie, Comcast, and some others. Right now, 135 different holdings make up JEPI. Now, of course, it's important to note that with the option overlay, there is going to be a cap 
an upside potential, which means Jeppy is probably never going to be an absolute growth monster. But that being said, Jeppy has pretty much performed pretty close to what I expected. The upside being capped and the downside also being limited, offering a nice amount of dividends on a monthly basis. Now, like I was saying, Jeppy's trailing 12 month dividend yield has has dropped quite substantially due to the latest payouts. And looking at some of the recent Jeppy payouts, we're looking at 34 cents per share per month, 29 cents, 36, 37. That, but once again, comparing to that of 2020, when volatility was much higher, Jeppy was paying anywhere from 40 to 60 cents per share per month, making the dividend yield almost double. Now, as of filming this video, Jeppy did announce a higher dividend payment than last month, so things do seem to be going in the right direction, at least for now. And this was, of course, because the volatility index, the VIX, definitely spiked nicely. And the way that the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF works, the lower the volatility in the market is, the lower the dividend payouts are going to be moving forward. But now to get to the fun part, looking at every single JEPI dividend that I was paid every single month since the beginning of this year in 2023. So the first dividend that I was paid was back in January of this year. I was paid $315.11 per share. Then in February, I was paid $283.22 per share. So just between those two months, we're looking at almost $600 of dividends, which is amazing. Then come March, $268.48. Then in April, $297.30. In May, $283.62. In June, $245.19. Then in July, $241.09. Then back in August, the lowest dividend of the entire year at $194.84, and then the most recent payout was $226.91. So obviously, even though I showed you at the beginning of this video that I was down as far as paper losses, around $1,300, the $1,300 loss was obviously made up for by all the dividends that I've been paid from Jeppy since I've owned the shares. And keep in mind, even if I go back to 2022, when I first started buying some shares of Jeppy, I was paid even more money, which back in December of 2022, one of the biggest dividends ever of $335.70. But with all that being said, I'm actually thoroughly impressed with how Jeppy's performed over the time span of me owning the shares of Jeppy. And although there's definitely other things in the market that could make me more money a lot faster, most likely, the thing I like about Jeppy is the predictable or semi predictable monthly income, which, like I mentioned earlier, as of right now, I can use the income to reinvest into different ETFs, into different stocks, or of course, into more Jeppy. And in the future, I can hopefully look to use this Jeppy dividend income to pay for bills or anything else. Now moving forward, I'm personally not going to purchase any more shares of Jeppy because across all my portfolios, I currently own well over 1,000 shares. But with that said, I don't think I'll also sell off my shares of Jeppy unless something changes significantly with the strategy, the management, or something else. But now I want to hear from you guys down below when it comes to a monthly pain. Dividend income ETF like Jeppy, is this something that you currently have in your portfolio? Let me know down below why or why not. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like on it and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by and if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.